Hello, everyone. We're, we're going to get started. And uh, so welcome. For those of you who've come from far away, welcome to Toronto. And uh, from those of you from across George Brown and other parts of the GTA, uh, welcome. And uh, to our international students especially, welcome as well. And I also would like to welcome our advisors. Many of them are here today, which is nice to see. And uh, as well, our, our keynote speaker, who's going to be speaking in a few minutes. So thanks uh, uh, for uh, deciding to take part in this charrette. Um, the, the BSI International Charrette is uh, something that I'm sure, after your, uh, your experience, is something that you'll never forget in your life and that you will find uh, to be uh, transformational. I, I really do think uh, you're going to be uh, a living in experience of, uh, you know, with the group that you're working with, with the larger community, where you're learning, innovating, and coming together. Now... Can get the screen up there. Um, so, I'll, uh, I, having welcomed you, I'd, I'd like to start with just a little bit about the Brookfield Sustainability Institute. Okay, and my name is spelt wrong, uh, but that's okay. Uh, so, what is a charrette? So, in the Beaux Arts uh, School, uh, the architecture students had a tradition whereby uh, the word charrette actually means cart, wheelbarrow. So uh, when your projects were due, the wheelbarrow would go down the aisle and the students would be on either side and they would have to throw their projects into the wheelbarrow for grading. So what it really meant was that you had to work very hard the day before and the days before to get your project ready for submission. So. Uh, it's, it, that's the, the origin of the root word, charrette, but really it's about that hard work, that heavy lifting that you do when you have a wheelbarrow and uh, where you work in a compressed way uh, to collaborate to achieve goals, right? So what you're uh, going to be doing and what's special, say, about a charrette at the BSI is that you're going to be focused um, uh, and you're going to be part of uh, interdisciplinary teams made up from people from all different cultures and parts of the world. You're gonna have people who are advising you from different professions, from different generations, and you're going to be working together to come up with a solution and to innovate and to create something that's uh, potentially helping the uh, clients and user groups that you're gonna be working with and for. And you're gonna be able to interact with them and co-create with them, co-create with the people that you're working with, and uh, the journey of any charrette is really a bit like a roller coaster ride. You, you, know, you get on, you can't quite get off, and you go up and down as you discover together the path that you need to take to arrive at something that is uh, uh, really interesting and that you can share back with everyone in the larger community that you're working with, which will be, uh, this group on Monday and also the, the people that are involved and who you're working with and for and your advisors, right? So that is, a, is kind of like a, a quick idea of what a charrette is about. Next slide. And so what's involved? Well, you're going to be using uh, your design thinking skills and you're going to be, if you've never used design thinking skills, you're going to be learning about design thinking skills from the people that you're working with. You're going to be innovating, you're going to be researching, and you're going to be exploring. And I urge you to uh, think about that as you're working and never hesitate to reach out. Uh, in the charrettes, as you're trying to solve a problem, get on the phone, talk to members of the community, uh, talk to other researchers. Uh, there's no limit to what you can do when you're working together to try to solve the problem that you're working on and to try to engage others to help you with solving. And then uh, ideally, you're going to be working with global teams. And that means people from different countries, uh, different cultures, uh, different languages. And so I urge you to all be respectful of each other's cultures, each other's languages, each other's traditions, and to, uh, to speak in a way with each other that is built on understanding 
and uh, acceptance and tolerance of each other, right? So remember that, you know, to work to solve the problems that we're solving, and in the case of the Brookfield Sustainability Institute charrettes, we're working on problems of sustainability that impact the planet, we're going to need to hear all the different voices in the room uh, to help solve those problems. And then, um, you know, the focus is going to be on sustainability and resilience. We're working with the charrette on themes of sustainable communities. We're looking at creating, in effect, what are new paradigms, new prototypes that can be uh, later adopted and used by people. Uh, the charrette that we held last year uh, resulted in uh, incredible projects that are now actually moving forward to fruition. We were working on a climate positive neighborhood uh, in the charrette last year. The students did work that followed work that was done in Milan uh, during the Minds conference. And then just this past month, uh, we took all of that work and we had a team working again interdisciplinary with a real client to develop the solution that is probably going to be implemented and built in a city named Guelph, which is just outside of Toronto. So know that the work that you're doing has legs and consequences and that will be shared and, and will help other people learn how to solve problems. And, um, and finally, I, I really want to encourage you when you're in the charrette not to limit your thinking and to be open. You know, during the first two or three days of the charrette, you should be open to any idea. You should be even uh, thinking about crazy ideas that might seem impossible at first. But, you know, as you work through them and you discuss them, often a crazy idea can lead to a smart idea as it's transformed and as people contribute to it and as it evolves, right? So be very open at the start of the charrette. And then as you move through the charrette, then use criteria and judgment to help uh, integrate the ideas and turn them into valuable ideas that can be used uh, by not only the clients that we're working directly for, but by the society as a whole. And I think uh, we're uh, going to be having a keynote tonight uh, by, uh, by uh, uh, Dr. Blair Feltmate, which will really help us understand why it's so important to have new solutions, uh, because our world is drastically changing and we need new solutions. Next slide. Now, a little bit about the Brookfield Sustainability Institute. Uh, we are working on what we call a smart and sustainable future. So we believe in nature-based solutions and in understanding new technologies for sustainability, but we also believe in using digital transformation. And we believe that when you optimize those two things together, you can really transform things uh, for the better. Next slide. And an example of that is across the street, and while you're here visiting, I urge you to walk around the building that is across the street. This is Limberloss Place, which is an example of smart sustainability. It uses the best of nature-based solutions, the best of advanced digital technology, the best of uh, you know, uh, net zero carbon uh, building methods to create a building that is a new model of how to build buildings in the world. Next slide. So backed by research, led by design, we create social product and service innovation for the age of sustainability. That's what we're doing at BSI. And frankly, that's what you're doing during this charrette. And so what areas are we working in? We're working in green energy, circular economy, building systems, mobility solutions, food security, just to name a few. And what are we trying to do? In everything we do at the BSI, we use this concept that I've developed called the ecology of innovation, which looks at all the aspects of innovation that have to be looked at to ensure and guarantee that an innovation comes to life. So it starts with a social innovation about how we want to live in a different and new way. And then you need a design innovation that kind of permits that to be possible. But then there are typically technical Cha uh, uh, changes that are required or innovations that are needed to make that feasible. And then uh, you need a business innovation to help propagate the solution and make sure that it's getting out there in society. And finally, you do need political innovation and new legislation to make sure that it's adopted and becomes a standard moving forward. 
So as you're doing your work, don't only look at the design, look at the social aspects, look at the technical aspects, look at the business aspects, and look at the political aspects. And you'll come up with a more holistic solution as you're working over these days. Next slide. And uh, BSI has actually three pillars. We have an observatory uh, where we share knowledge and run events. We have curriculum and training where we, we have programs where we teach sustainability, but also where we run charrettes like this so people can learn and become trained in how to do it. And we have something called the Global Solution Studio, which is really something that I urge you in the future to try to become part of, where we have teams of people working on answers for government, for corporations, for nonprofits, for foundations, coming up with new ideas for the future. Next slide. And it's all built on 20 years of running uh, something that we called the Institute Without Boundaries, where we did 70 research projects, we had over 100 charrettes, and uh, we worked with partners and collaborators. Uh, and so we've taken what we learned in that 20 years and we've relaunched with the new BSI. Next. And things that we're pioneering are things like an iterative and agile process for integrated design process. Next slide. And our charrettes, which are very unique, and we've done over 150 around the world, and you're going to become, you know, maybe 151st group that does them. Next slide. And then we have our, uh, our postgraduate certificates. We have the interdisciplinary design strategy program. We have students who will be leading your team from that program. Uh, we have two cohorts that are working on uh, urban agriculture in one case, and the other case on uh, mobile health and wellness clinics. So uh, this is one of our programs. We're launching five new programs on ESG, net zero project management, um, uh, smart sustainability, and digital twinning, other topics like that, biomimicry in the future. And so there'll be more of these graduate programs. Next slide. Uh, just to give you a taste of the Global Solution Studio, there's Matt Hexmer who uh, helps run it. Next slide. Uh, we're, this is the kind of things that we do, research and strategy, innovation, and development. Next slide. And we're working with clients uh, from around the world and from different fields. Next slide. And uh, you know these are the kind of projects. So, uh, we are working on our book for the BSI, but we're working on, we worked with the uh, Royal Bank of Canada to create a decarbonization plan for the built environment sector. With For Tomorrow, we established our first circular sustainable fashion brand that is producing clothing for George Brown, and we just launched a Kickstarter, and uh, um, our students designed the principles of the sustainable fashion brand and the uh, clothing that we're s selling in the for tomorrow and we've partnered with six R who does the app that guarantees the recycling and then we're working on a film for Lindbergh lost we're working on a seniors community in the Wooler we're working on a new hydrogen uh, power to drive trucks for coal chain and we're working on the future of work these are just examples of the projects we're working on next slide and to give you more detail, uh, this case, you know, trucks need to be cooled and heated. And instead of doing it with diesel, we've developed a hydrogen system, we developed the branding, and we developed the AI that will run the system. Next slide. With Aluma Power, and we have a member from Aluma Power here, Hank uh, Anende, uh, we worked with them to, they have an amazing technology with an aluminum disc that gives you energy. So we worked with them to look at where it could be used, how it could be used, and help them frame their whole uh, presentation package so that they could go for uh, a scale-up funding, which they were successful in achieving. In fact, they got Purelator as a client to work with. Next slide. We're working on Limburg Lost Place, which will be finished and which will be this building that has a totally new wood structural system like no other that has existed before. And a mechanical system that doesn't exist because we are not building big air conditioners and heating units. It's all done with solar and air, solar chimneys and passive heating and sensors. Next slide. 
Uh, we've done projects like the Canoe Home, which was a modular prefabricated mass plywood house. This was done in 2006, many, many years ago. Next slide. And we're doing projects like how to redesign airports so that they become gateways for sustainable transportation and cities in themselves. Next slide. Uh, working with 6R on the fast fashion, closing the loop and developing a global supply chain for recycling. Next slide. There's the Four Tomorrow hoodies. You can buy them now online if you go onto the Kickstarter. Next slide. Next slide. And here are the principles that we developed. Uh, recyclable, sustainable fibers, zero waste patterns designed for disassembly, uh, just-in-time production, increased physical and emotional durability, equitable labor and impact accounting, and end-of-life recycling. So we don't only create a sustainable piece of fashion, we created the whole principles and philosophy that would be behind sustainable circular fashion. Next slide. And that was all developed with our students. Uh, working on the future of work. Next slide. And the, I've already talked about this. Next slide. And then uh, the Mass Timber Conference. And more importantly, next slide, the Mass Timber Database. So we've developed a database of all the Mass Timber buildings in the world. And uh, we're adding to it every day. And pretty soon it's going to launch. And it was all collected by students from Canada, from Italy, uh, from other countries in Asia. And we were able to develop the first truly global database of all the mass timber designs. So for those of you who are architects in the audience, when this is open, you'll be able to go find out everything you need to know about every mass timber building. And we're building new databases on climate positive neighborhoods, on uh, energy solutions, et cetera, over the years. Next slide. So I, I just want to leave you with the spirit of what we're trying to do, which is let's work together across disciplines. There are architects here. There are technologists. There are uh, graphic designers, interaction designers, brand designers. There are uh, interactive media management students. Uh, there are uh, design management students, interdisciplinary design strategy students. There are students from every different type of field uh, that you can imagine, including media and uh, other uh, areas. So let's work across disciplines. Let's collaborate in a radical way so that we can create the solutions that are needed for tomorrow. And I want to leave you with that as uh, a, a kind of point of inspiration for what you should get and uh, what you should try to practice through these next few days. And now, I have the extreme pleasure of introducing um, uh, Dr. Blair Feltmate. And uh, uh, Blair is uh, uh, in charge of the Intact uh, Institute for, uh, uh, for, uh, for Climate Adaptation at the University of Waterloo. But he spent 20 years of his life working with large corporations, trying to get them to innovate and adopt sustainability practices before he then started on what is a 15-year journey of helping people uh, with a, really with understanding that our sustainability problem is so severe that we actually need to work on adaptation and risk mitigation. And he is going to help us understand what I think we're all experiencing because in every part of the world, there's wildfires, flooding, severe climate events, and uh, yes, we can do things more sustainably, but we have to be ready uh, in case things are going to get worse. And he's going to be able to talk to you about how things are going to get worse and what we have to do. And uh, uh, with his, uh, you know, a weather gone wild lecture. So without further ado, I would like to invite. Uh, Blair up uh, to share his knowledge and his ideas with us so that they'll inspire the work that you do over the next few days. Blair.